One of the examples that I like to use to demonstrate PWM, pulse width modulation, is on how to control a hobby servo. And this is specific to analog servos. Since there are digital servos and analog servos, digital servos only require a specific communications protocol where you're just sending information via some protocol like I squared C. But with analog servos, they require a PWM signal at a 20 millisecond period. So what is a 20 millisecond period? You can think of this as a portion of a one second period. So let's draw a one second period. A one second period has 1000 milliseconds. So if this line represents one second, this would have 1000 milliseconds along this line. So 20 milliseconds would be represented by each tick represents 40 milliseconds. Because if we take 1000 milliseconds and divide it by 20 milliseconds, we would have 50 parts. And in this one second, we have 50 spaces between the ticks. So the servo is going to require us to create a PWM signal with a pulse between each one of those ticks. The pulse is actually going to be relatively narrow. And the width of this pulse here will represent the rotation of the horn on the servo. And we learned from the other tutorials that the ARR determines the period and the CCR and the number after the CCR is the specific channel we're using for the timer determines the duty cycle. And the duty cycle in this case will determine the rotation of the servo's arm, the servo's horn. So our first task that we need to do is we need to determine the period. Okay, so first we need to start somewhere to figure out this ARR value. The data sheet of the microcontroller that I'm using states that the clock speed at reset is 8 megahertz. So what does that mean? This second here, from this point to this point, is 8 million cycles. And we know that we have 50 partitions. So 8 million divided by 50 partitions, because we need to figure out how many cycles is in a single period here. And this equals 160,000. Well, this value is actually too high for an ARR value. The ARR value can only go up to 65,535. So this is where the prescaler comes into play. If we use a prescaler of one, that would essentially divide this 8 million by two. So let's just, for the sake of argument, divide this by two, that would be 4 million, divided by 50, and that would be 80,000. That's the same thing as taking the 160,000 and dividing that by two. So if we have a prescaler of one, we're dividing this by two. If we have a prescaler of two, it's dividing this by three. So let's see what that would be. Okay, that's 53,333.33 repeating. I'm not sure if I like a number that has a decimal in it. So let's, let's use a prescaler of four and see what that gives us. And that would be 40,000. So that works. So if we kept the prescaler at four, that's the PSC number, we would use the 40,000 for our ARR number. But we're just assuming that the microcontroller is eight, eight megahertz. We're just hoping that the data sheet is correct. So let's go ahead and do some tests to make sure that 40,000 done 50 times would equal one second. So we could actually have a routine in the, in the microcontroller in our programming, and we can have the microcontroller only when this is counted up 50 times, it would maybe show a count up on, a, on an LCD, and we can determine our sort of human sense of what a second is and see if it does look like a, sec a second. And that would verify that the 8 million or 8 megahertz is an actual correct number that our microcontroller is set. Let's make a library from our PWM code so we don't have to keep rewriting all of this stuff. In the beginning, we'll just use a, we'll just make a simple library. So we'll first create a new, a new file. We'll call this, what do we call the other ones? Because I'd like to use the same, I guess we can call it PWM functions. And we'll call, we'll use the .h header file. And let's go ahead and save. So now we have PWM functions and we have our blank, uh, blank screen here. And I think I was making a mistake in the previous videos where I was creating the LCD functions and the ADC functions and then I was copying them and putting them into the workspaces that I wanted to. 
but it makes more sense to actually keep them in the initial workspace that I was using and then just add them to this project if we wanted them. So I'm going to treat like in the timers and counters. This is the timers and counters project that I have. And anything that relates to the timers and counters, I'm going to keep in this project. And I'll just add those files into other projects, but I won't copy them into the projects. So when I make a change to the file, when I make a change to the header and make it more robust and add more functions, I don't have to make changes to all of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the LCD functions and see how I, I, use, I did the, um, the if, if not defined. So I'll just copy that in. I don't need this stdio. I'll just take that out. And then I'll end if. So anything that happens inside of here will be executed once. So let's take all of our stuff that relates to the timer and the PWM. And we're going to copy it or cut it and then paste it here. Let's wrap a temporary function around it. Void PWM function. Doesn't really matter what I'm going to put in here yet. And then I'll just put everything in here. Okay, at this point, I don't want to make it any more complicated than what it is. But I'm going to change this to setup, I think. PWM setup. And I want to try to keep everything in this order. So that's one of the reasons why I don't want to do anything more complicated. Because I could, I could um, have in like maybe an input for a timer number and timer channel. But I want to just maintain the, the order and, and the way it is now. So I'm going to put PWM setup channel four. And we can add more later and then maybe even make it a little bit more. We can refactor it a little bit more later to make it more um, organized. So I know I need to change these numbers here, the prescaler, the period, and the duty cycle. So let's go ahead and put those in first. So we're gonna make them regular integers because they actually have a pretty high number. They can go up to 65,535. So the prescaler, we'll just call it prescaler. And we'll have an input for period and an input for the duty cycle. So all we'll do is just come in here and replace these period and the duty cycle. Okay. So I think we can go ahead and start using this now. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to copy and paste this into our main and the PWM and timer setup stuff was over here. So let's go ahead and put it right here. Take out the void because we don't need that anymore. And let's create a prescaler and we we're going to use a prescaler of four, so we'll put three there because it's zero, one, two, and three, which makes four counts in the prescaler. And the period, we wanted 40,000, so let's go 39,999, so that should be 40,000 with a zero index. And the duty cycle, uh, we don't know that yet actually, so let's just put in 2,000. It's not really necessary right now to put in the correct number because we're just going to see if we got the timing right. Let's put a semicolon at the end. Let's keep the ADC stuff with the LCD. And I'm just going to put in count on the next line for the LCD. So we can see how it's counting up. Let's remove this because we don't need this anymore. I think I'm going to remove this here. What this part of the code is doing is we're putting in the ADC into the duty cycle to change the duty cycle, but we're not going to do that right now. And we don't need to look at, well, we can look what the ADC is showing. It doesn't really affect that. What we're about to do, so what we want to do is show the count of the timer. Let's put on the second line here. Let's put one and let's see where on that line. Eight. Actually, I think it's seven because it's I started from one, not zero. Let's first build it and see if we didn't make any mistakes. We do have a mistake here, it looks like. It's telling me that 
I have an implicit declaration of function. I'm not de de declaring a function. It's because I haven't included the file yet. So I'm going to include this at the end. PWM functions. So now it should build. No. What is it telling me? What could that be? Let's take a look at the PWM functions. Oh, I know why. Because of this. I forgot to name it. So I'll just put in PWM functions, header. All right, that should take care of it now. That was not smart. Okay, so let's try it again. Okay, so it was, it is now error free. Well, now that we've changed the PWM or we've set it up to output a PW, PWM the way we want it to, this is probably not what we're gonna need to look and see if we have the proper timing using the 40,000 as the period because we need to see what the timer, we wanna just con confirm that 40,000 is the right number, but we need to actually be able to see it with our own eyes and look at it in the LCD. And the only way we're gonna do that is to actually put the 40,000 in the prescaler. And the ARR value, because we have a prescaler of four, when it gets up to 200, because if we're looking at multiples of 50. So if, when it goes up to 50, we know that we've covered one second, if there was a prescaler of four. But since we can't do four times this number, and it, you know, it would, go above the, the capacity of that type, of that data type, we're going to have to put 200 here because that's uh, 50 times 4 would be 200. So for every 200 counts up using the ARR, that would be one second. Let me put this down to like 10 or something like that. We, we don't want to cause any problems with the duty cycle being any more than the period. So the ARR number is what's going to be resetting the counter. It's going to be counting up to 200, and then it's going to go reset back down to zero. If you remember the video discussing counters, timers, and the, the ARR value. So when we take a look at this, we could actually see it counting up to zero, or up to 200, and then down to zero every single second. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, we flash the market controller. You can see it's counting from 0 to 200 every second. So if I just count like I would normally do in for each second. So if, we're, if we count normally like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can see that it's counting for every second. But that doesn't give us enough clarity and understanding whether it's doing it right or not. So let's see if we can have it actually count seconds, just to make sure that we're confirming that our eight megahertz is really eight megahertz. We're not gonna be able to go in here and just do an, a conditional statement with the, the count because we're not gonna be able to capture a specific count because this program is working a lot slower than the counter is working. So if I said like um, if timer counter equals 200 then increment a second we would miss that 200 some of the times. So the only way to actually look at incrementing for each second we're gonna have to look at interrupts and there is an interrupt flag that we can access for this timer and it's called the UIF update interrupt flag and the way it works is if you look at one of these diagrams you can see it counting up when the counter is reset at zero the update interrupt flag is set and once it's set up high I can count one second and then I can reset it by software I can actually put a zero in this in this flag. So let's go ahead and do that and see what that would take. So I know I have to look at this register or this in the register. It's in the SR register, I believe. And I also need to make sure that the URS bit 
is set as well. So let's take a look and find out where that URS bit is located. The URS bit is located in the control register for the timer one. You can see it right here at the second bit place. And let's see if we can find out more about it. The update request source. This bit, this bit is set and cleared by software to select the UEV up event sources. And I believe it really doesn't matter because we're looking for the underflow or overflow. So it looks like it can, it'll work with either zero or one. Um, if I wanted to get the UIF to be high on the UG bit, then I would want zero or for the slave mode controller, but that's not really important to me. I'm really concerned with the counter overflow and underflow. So let's see if this works. So I shouldn't have to update this at all. So let's go ahead and just look at the UIF flag and see what happens. So if the time one SR, the status register and, oh, here we go, the SR UIF, that's what I want, then so this is where we want to increment the second and then we're going to set it back to, we're going to reset it. So let's create a new variable called seconds counter. We'll make it zero and we will increment that whenever this flag is invoked. And now I'm going to reset the flag. Okay, now we still need to display it on the LCD, so let's go ahead and do that. So instead of doing this, showing the timer counter, we'll show the seconds. The seconds counter. The seconds counter. So this should show us seconds. Let's see if this works. And we have no errors. Do know the period let's needs to be 40,000 flash the microcontroller and see what happens. Okay, it looks like we have have correct output. It looks like it's going up one second. So we have just confirmed that we have an eight megahertz microcontroller. It would set at eight megahertz and that is that is what it says in the data sheet. And it is counting up one second at a time. So we know that putting in the PWM the way we want to for the servo would work fine. So 40,000 is the correct number. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it. Go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me. Oh yeah, and go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.